Bison Basketball Show with NDSU head coaches Dave Richmond and Jory Collins. The Bison Basketball Show is presented by Gate City Bank for a better way of life. And Pepsi. Welcome into another edition of the Bison Basketball Show. As always, Rob Pip here alongside head coach Dave Richmond. Coach, good to see you. Things clicking along in the Summit League. How have you been? It's been great. You know, I, I, uh, in a results-oriented business, uh, it's not supposed to mean about results, but certainly a couple road wins uh, makes you feel a lot better about things and uh, really pleased with the progress the guys are, are making, continuing to make, and understanding the importance of all the little details that goes into the successes that we've been able to have and, and ex excited for a big week ahead. And, and that starts here, um, you know, Monday with our practices and building forward to some uh, couple big games here Thursday and Saturday. Well, again, five and two in the Summit League. Things rolling right along. We'll go back and talk about two previous matchups here on this show today as we look ahead or look back and, and go to that game to get started versus Denver. A 90 to 70 victory there on the road. An important win as the Bison keeping their foot on the gas pedal. Just really stood out to you some of the success in this ball game, coach. Well, Denver's a team, Rob, as you've been, as you know, and you've been following. They had a, a lot of success in the non conference, in particular at home, a team that's shooting at a really good clip offensively. Um, but, you know, I, I thought for the most part, we, we just came out and dictated this game. We got into a little bit of foul trouble and hindered some things towards the end of the second half, or excuse me, into the first half. Uh, maybe a little bit selfish offensively at, at, at times, but overall, you go on the road, you play a complete game like that. Uh, it was great to see. You see some guys, uh, you know, the last two games uh, over the Denver game and then it continued Saturday against Omaha really distributed the ball very well. Um, you know, we talk about being plus 13 in the assist category, and, and we were that both times. I mean, here you're seeing some clips of us taking advantage of some size that we've got and being on the offensive glass. And so I encouraged to see the progress continue on the road this week. Uh, Bison led by as many as 27 in that second half. Andrew Morgan had a career high four assists. Just how has his awareness improved distributing that ball to his teammates? Yeah, I think it's time. You know, I mean, obviously Andrew and then Grant as well. They're getting double teamed a lot of the time. And then it's just about making the right decision. And, and we've tried to make things uh, very simple for them, keep things uh, routine when it comes to that. Teams are certainly giving us different looks. And, and that, that's all part of the challenge. But uh, we, we've talked a lot about welcome. I mean, the challenge to experience the rewards. I think one of those things, too, and we've highlighted, and we'll talk more about him on this show, too, is just Jakari Wyatt. We saw some clips earlier. Just his hustle, his awareness, getting down the court very fast. And I know that's something that you've really talked to a lot of the guys about, saying, hey, always have your head up, get back, hustle on those plays. Jakari White's kind of setting that tone for the rest of his teammates. He's done a great job, Rob. He really has and continued to grow into um, just that better version of himself. And it's really on, been on both ends of the floor. Yeah, he's shooting it at a really good clip offensively. Um, but he's also charged pretty much night in and night out with you know guarding the best perimeter um, offensive player for the opponent. So I'm um, really pleased with Jakari and how he settled in and acclimated himself and having an impact on us. And um, certainly, hopefully, you know, our program's having an impact on Jakari. Grant Nelson wrapping up, as you can see, 17 points there, nine rebounds. He was just one shy of a double-double, four, four blocks, two steals. What else could he have done in that game, Coach? He filled up the stat sheet. <laughs> I was going to say, did he get the water bottles as well? You know, Grant... Uh, um, you know, obviously played a complete game in both ends of the floor, too. Got into a little bit of foul trouble. Um, and, and then because of the lead, we didn't play him a, as much to, as he normally has. He was under 30 minutes, which was nice uh, on the front side of a, of a road swing. But, um, you know, that's obviously, as we know, a very talented young man. Well, it's good to get that victory, continuing that domination there in the Summit League. And I want to be careful about saying that word domination because we know that every game you go into is very tough, especially to win on the road. On the road, though, as uh, we continue to chat and you face another good program, and I always say, and, and you know this, and you and I talk about it, the scores aren't vindicative of who these teams are sometimes, and even their records. And Omaha, another team in the Summit that's had their struggles, but this was another great victory for the Bison. You go out in that ball game, trailed early there, and, and trailed by one, I believe, at the first half, 29 to 28, but, you know, found a way to overcome adversity in the second half. Bowden Scunberg went off in that ball game. Yeah, again, you, you look at an Omaha team that it went to Western um, and taking care of business there. They had come off a victory against, you know, North Dakota the, the couple nights before and just a quick day of turnaround. We're, we're playing late on Thursday night, traveling on Friday, and then uh, we played at noon Central Standard Time on Saturday. And, and I thought our guys, uh, for the most part, came out pretty good. They hit some tough shots early that I felt kept them around. 
Uh, we went in and we went in halftime, challenged uh, challenged each other. The guys challenged us as a staff. We challenged them as a sta as a team and uh, really responded. You can see right there is, is a great example of Bison basketball where our, our defense is leading to our offense and a couple of possessions like that. And, and again, I thought our guys across the board were really locked in and, and certainly um, you know really happy for Bowden to have that success, see the ball go through the hole and had a big impact obviously on the game for us Saturday afternoon. How important were those three pointers? Because we there was a there was an option and I talked about Bowden just kind of erupting there. I believe he had three within two minutes from beyond the arc. Just once you get into that rhythm, how important is that and, and how do you keep that success going from beyond the three point line? Well I, I think it's it's really twofold. One it's it's you know gapping us and, and helping us gap the game a little bit too. But you know as we've talked about Morgan and Grant so much, they're getting so much attention. Well, that, that really compromises the defense when you've got it going from the perimeter as well and you're making threes, and, and now they're picking and choosing how they want to um, battle you. Um, and so it, it was great. You know, we, we have some capable shooters. Some nights, uh, you know, we, we've struggled a little bit. But I think it's all part of the routine of getting into the gym like we've been in um, to quite a bit lately, but also where those shots are coming from. Bowden Scunberg again finishing up career-high 25 points. He also had seven from behind the arc. That was a new high for him as well. And then once again, Morgs getting in the business there with 15 points in that 78-65 to victory over Omaha on the road. And, you know, you stretch the win streak now to five games, and, and you and I have mentioned this. How do you just keep the guys from getting too complacent in the success and realizing you got to go one game at a time? Nobody's hung any banners, Rob, for being 5-2 and two or what are we are, seven games into the Summit League. And, and we need to continue to be a better version of ourselves. I talked about some things. Uh, at Denver, we got into some foul trouble. Um, at, at Omaha, I thought we, we, we lost some of our focus there when we got up, up a little bit. Uh, we're playing very good basketball right now, make no mistake about it, but we don't want to be playing our best basketball in, in, in mid-January. And, and so it's important for us to utilize the time and practice, the film sessions to keep growing because uh, I firmly believe there's a better version of us out there. Well, a great day of shooting there, 53% overall. We'll talk more with head coach Dave Richmond. When we come back, stay with us. This is the Bison Basketball Show. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. A better way of life is better days off and better nights in. Better hellos. And better goodbyes. With locally approved financed and serviced home loans. Gate City Bank makes buying a home simple. Welcome home. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Get more local news and weather from the most watched news team in the region. WDAY News, weeknights at 4 and 5. Committed to being first on the scene for major local stories and bringing you straightforward facts every day. Plan for the night ahead at 4 p.m. with the weather impacting your area. With more easy to understand weather coverage at 5. Everything you need to know. Turn to the news leader, WDAY News. Are you looking for an opportunity to work in an exciting and innovative environment? WDAY TV is hiring. Be a part of a locally owned award-winning station. All current job openings can be found at forumcom.com slash careers. We're a leading media and technology company with a core culture of values and perks like competitive PTO, benefits, and more. Join our team of people whose passion and purpose is fueled by collaboration and innovation. WDAY TV. Build your career here. Burgers, better with Pepsi. Welcome back to the Bison Basketball Show. Rob Hip here with men's head basketball coach Dave Richmond. Coach, you and I mentioned this a week or so ago that it seems the team has kind of turned a corner looking ahead and, and finding that success now here in the Summit League as we continue on play. I, I once heard an old a pastor mention it to me like this. He said, are you picking up what I'm putting down? So I'll ask you, do you feel like the guys are picking up what you guys are putting down now on the staff? Oh, most definitely. And to, to make sure and clearly defend the guys, 
Um, this is an inexperienced group. Um, we, we went through a very challenging non-conference schedule. We had some sickness. We had some injuries. Um, all perspective, also all excuses. Through it all, the guys kept grinding, listening, trusting our process. And it's been fun to see the guys get rewarded. It, it's, it's been fun to see some things click. Uh, but we also, like I said before in the first segment, Rob, is we need to understand why those things are clicking. Uh, the, the work that's going in behind the scenes, all the details that we talk about. And continuing on a daily basis, uh, whether that's obviously game, but, but certainly a shooting session, a video session, practices of continuing to get better. When we look at these young players and, and, and we see them transition, how long does it generally take for a player to adjust when you're a new player? I know that can vary, but yeah. what do you normally see? Yeah, I think it varies. It, it really does. You know, I, I've always heard from Coach Miles, like a Jakari White, a, a young man coming from a junior college, kind of takes about a half year. Freshman, sometimes it, it takes a little longer. Um, sometimes, in some cases, maybe like a Rocky Cruiser. Um, it, it took him about a year and a half. So, you know, we're, we're, we're very um, diligent in making sure that we have the roots laid, the foundation is there. If you're going to do things right, right takes time. Uh, that being said, we're, we're going to hold you accountable and push you on a daily basis uh, to get there. Um, it, it's not making an excuse about your age or experience. It's about pushing you to a, to a standard. Well, big games coming up here this week, of course. Oral Roberts here back at the Shill Center on Thursday. We need folks to show up. The fans make a, a huge difference, Coach, and it's good to be back at home. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to make a game bigger than it is, Rob, and this is the next game on the schedule, but you got one versus two, you know, here in Fargo on a Thursday night, and um, hopefully your schedules are clear. Uh, I know you and I will be there, but an exciting opportunity to come in and watch a really good brand of basketball, uh, two teams that are clicking at a pretty high level right now. I know it just... You you look at the game one and one and zero each game. You want to go out there and get that win, but this will be for the top spot in the Summit League. And, and you go back and look at the buys, and now at four and two, and to think how much they've improved from the beginning of the season until now, and an opportunity here to get to that top spot. Yeah, and, and again, no matter what happens, everything we want to do is still in front of us, Rob. But um, it, it's about being in the moment. It's about being in the moment Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and, and, and attacking the process uh, again. <laughs> I find myself saying those things all the time, but I also find our, ourselves in, in a pretty good situation this time of year. And, and so we're going stick to stick to our MO, and um, that's working to be a better version of ourselves, done by getting a little bit better each day. Well, Coach, as always, appreciate your time. Looking forward to those matchups. We'll step aside. We'll take a break. Women's head basketball coach Jory Collins joins us when we come back on the Bison Basketball Show. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. This is Jack. Jack loves sports. And since he banks at Gate City Bank, he can show his spirit right on his debit card. Even better, Gate City Bank will donate $10 to his favorite local school. And when Jack's friends cheer on their favorite teams, those schools receive $10 too. Plus, Jack and his friends score every day with free ATMs worldwide. Now that's always a win. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life. For the best sports coverage, turn to the home of local sports, WDAY. For exclusive live games, analysis, and much more, there are more ways to watch than ever before. Turn to WDAY and WDAY Extra or subscribe online to WDAY Sports Plus. For up-to-the-minute content you won't find anywhere else. Available on Inforum.com. Don't miss a minute of the action on the home of local sports, WDAY. Your local news informs and inspires. We share your stories of sorrow and hope. The stories that entertain, educate, and engage. Your news at five starts. We now. record the past and reveal the future. We tell the stories of your community with local news. Burgers, better with Pepsi. Welcome back into the Bison Basketball Show. Always great to be joined by women's head basketball coach Jory Collins. Coach, good to see you. How you good doing? Good to see you, Rob. Doing great. 
Doing great. Great weekend for us. Feels like we're in a good rhythm. You and I get to catch up every week and, and talk women's basketball and got to be happy with where your girls are at right now. Six and one in the Summit League. A lot of success. Wanted to start out of the gate. What's really led to that success so far this season? Yeah, I just think, you know, the mentality of our team, uh, the, the expectations that we have, um, the, our veteran players are playing really well. Heaven Hamling's leading us, playing well. Abby Schulte's playing well. We've been able to mix in some young kids. Uh, but really just the mindset of our team is, is a little bit different than it has been in the past. And they have high expectations, and they're trying to play up to those. Well, you just answered kind of the next question. I was going to ask what really stands out this year compared to last year. never want to compare teams in, in that sense, but there are things that are a little bit different this year than you've, you've seen in years past. Yeah, I mean, when you just when, if we're comparing last year and this year, the, the unselfishness of our team right now is, is something that I really enjoy. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a team effort. We have some individuals performing at a high level, but uh, everybody's happy about that. Everybody just wants to win, do what it takes to win. Whatever that role may be for them at the moment uh, is okay as long as we're playing well and being successful, and, and right now we are. We'll look back at the previous two games and getting started with Denver. A great victory there for your squad at home back at the Shills. A dominating performance, winning 71-43. to Abby Graham, a season-high 22 points. She was 8 of 9 from the field and 3 for 3 from behind the arc. I just wanted to ask you what led to her success. You know, she found herself in some good spots in that half. I think, you know, that little sequence there, I think she just made a 3, came down, blocked the shot, then got the run out. Uh, stepped into uh, some good shots, shot the ball with confidence. Uh, you know, she had 20 points in the half, which was uh, great for her. She's got great work ethic and, and, and loves it to play, loves to compete. So it was fun to see her, you know, have some success. And really just keeping their foot on the gas pedal when you look at that analogy for this women's team, especially in the second half, shooting over 69% from the field. Just how do you keep the girls focused on the success in the middle of that momentum? Yeah, you know, I, I think for us in this particular game, it was on the defensive end. I think we held them to, to 43 points, which is, you know, uh, Denver's usually pretty potent on the offensive end. They averaged 33-point attempts a game, uh, by far the most in our league. We held them to just 15 attempts, only four makes from the three. That was as good a defensive performance as we probably had this year. Yeah, and a 71-43 to 43 dominating victory there at home at the Shill Center behind Bison Nation, showing up, being loud. Abby Graham, 22 points. Heaven Hamling there with 14 points as they continue and, and find their success. And when you look at a young lady like Abby Graham, who has she really latched on to? Who's kind of been that leader for her as she's continued to grow? Yeah, I think, you know, she her and Heaven uh, get along really well in a sense that I think, you know, when Abby Graham came in, you know, I think the first thing Heaven told me was, man, she wants to win as bad as I do. You know, she gets mad if she doesn't do well in a drill or uh, she gets upset if she doesn't make a play that she should make. And just that, you know, that, that inner talk of, you know, high expectations for yourself. Um, they're, they're really similar in that way. Well, the success continued as you host Omaha back at the Shills Center and an eight game, eight and oh, actually at home this year at the Shills Center, taking a look at the 83 to 71 victory there as the Bison, again, staying undefeated eight and oh this season at home, extended that win streak to three. What was really working well in this matchup, Coach? You know, hard, hard fought game. Uh, Omaha came in, I thought played really well. Um, you know, we probably win that game on our three-point shooting. I think we made 14 threes, maybe a season high for us in that game. Uh, Heaven was great from the three-point line. I think six of 13 in the game. And then L. Evans uh, also had a monster game and, and knocked down four. Uh, but then we had other people spot up and just take the shots that were available. And, and when you're making threes, that makes up for some things. Uh, you know, it wasn't our best. I wanted to come back and have a great defensive performance after the Denver game. We weren't quite as efficient on the defensive end. Uh, but our three-point shooting in this game probably probably saved it for us. Well, having Hamling leading all scores with 26 points, 6 of 13 from three. She had six rebounds, three steals. And kind of jokingly, what else could she have done in this ball game? Yeah, I mean, she's just right now, the, she's in a stretch here of, of the last probably six or seven games, uh, Rob, where she's just been filling up the stat sheet uh, all over the place. And, and, and you can see here, that, you know, a thousand career points. We, she got a thousand a few weeks ago, but that was kind of with her SFA stats as a, as a true freshman. Now she's a thousand over as a Bison. 
Uh, really proud of her effort. Yeah, that was kind of a storyline heading into this game that I was going to ask you about, and, and that up there on the screen now, 1,005 officially career points as you have it on paper, finishing up there well over 20 points in a ball game. And then Elle Evans again, another dominating performance by her, 20 points and eight rebounds. What have you liked from her play as the season continues on? Yeah, I think she's starting to, to get more comfortable offensively. Uh, you know, she made four or five threes, I think, in the first half, and there was two other ones, Rob, where you're like, man, you got to shoot that. You just made one from the same spot. So continuing for her to, to be just a tad bit more, I don't want to say selfish, but uh, you know, if that's the right play, then it's the right play. And if you happen to be the guy there that needs to shoot it three times in a row, then you got to have that mentality to step up and want to knock it down. And she's still feeling that out a little bit. But, uh, man, when she does let it go, you always feel good about it. We know the success so far this season that has continued for women's basketball. What are just some areas that you really feel that the team still needs to improve on? Yeah, so one of our areas is free throw shooting. And, uh, and the amount of times we're putting the other team on the free throw line. That's really, as we've gone on this year and looked at our analytics and things about where can we improve. We've been up and down at the free throw line. Against Denver, we shot 8 of 17. Not very good against, against UNO a couple days later. We're 17 of 20, so much better. But that's still a roller coaster you don't want to be on. Uh, and then we're just fouling a little bit too much and giving up too many free throw opportunities to the other team right now. A lot of opportunity continue to grow and more success on the way for women's basketball. Still one more segment to go. We'll step aside. We'll take a break. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. This is Jack. Jack has a debit card from Gate City Bank. However, it looks like a little night ninja took off with his card, as they sometimes do. <laughs> but lucky for Jack, he can freeze his missing debit card with the tap of his mobile app. And even if his card is stolen or lost for good, he can go to any Gate City Bank location to get a new card issued instantly. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life. When it matters most, turn to the most watched, most trusted news team in the region, the news leader, WDAY News. More people turn to WDAY News, first on the scene for breaking news and major local stories. The best coverage of local weather, taking the guesswork out of your forecast. Everything you need to know. Turn to the news leader, WDAY News, weeknights at 6 and 10. Inform has been your trusted local news source for more than 130 years. We are committed to providing our community with local news that's relevant, trustworthy, and accurate. But what sets us apart is our unique understanding of the Fargo-Moorhead community, because it's our community too. Get local news that works for you at Inforum.com. Burgers, better with Pepsi. Welcome back into the Bison Basketball Show. One of the newer faces on the NDSU women's basketball team is Christina Ikofo Yomain. WDAY's Logan Campbell sits down one on one with the Belgium native. Just go back to when you started playing basketball. Mm -hmm. How old were you? I was at four. Yeah, I was at four or five. Mm -hmm. So I was really little. So I didn't even understand what basketball was. I was just doing it because it was just fun. And then I started loving it when I was around like nine, ten. And I think like I took it seriously at this point. What made you fall in love with the sport? I think just people around me just were just talking and were like, yeah, Chris, you can do something with your basketball. And I was like, yeah, maybe. So I was like, okay, just take it seriously and see where you can go with it. Well, you did do something with it. Yeah. All the way from Belgium to the United States. Can you just tell us a little bit about what that transition was like for you? Okay, it was really hard because it was, I came here when COVID hit in 2020. So it was really different. I couldn't play the first season. But I think I just did a good job by just get used to it, the level, people, everybody. So you knew right away NDSU was going to be yeah. the next place for you? Yeah. Okay, so when you got here and you started practicing with all your teammates, was there someone that you kind of instantly connected with? 
No. No, because I was just so shy. I wasn't just talking. I was just like, okay, I mean, I'm new here. And so I was just like getting used to it. So it took me a while. But now just I'm just connected with everybody on the team. What was the moment you were like, damn, I'm comfortable. I'm going to be the Chris that everyone knows and loves today. Two weeks ago. <laughs> Two weeks yeah, ago? It took me a while to just be comfortable with everybody. Why is that? Because I just don't like to just talk and be open with people because I'm scared. So I'm just so shy. It's so funny that you are describing yourself as shy because every time we talk to Jory, he <laughs> describes you as a firecracker that comes off the bench. Yeah, because on the court, I'm just a whole different person. So what is the court version of Chris that we see during games? I love to talk, I love to scream, I love to I love to laugh, just do everything, everything, everything. Just it made, it just brings me so so much joy to just play basketball. I saw you the other day, you made a basket and your teammates just went crazy for you on the bench. What was that moment like for you? And why were they so excited for you? Because I never took a shot. I don't took I don't take shots during practice. And they're like, Chris, you need to shoot. You need to shoot. I'm like, no, I don't want to shoot. And then I shoot it, and I made it. And I was like, whoa, I made it, I made it. So everybody was just happy, and I was just happy about that. You want to start shooting more? Yeah, I will do that. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, I will do that. What is your role on this team, Chris? Just, I think just to bring a lot of energy, like mm -hmm. off the bench, on the court take a lot of rebound, just do, you know, the little things. I think that's my role. Well, a great story there by Logan. We appreciate that very much. And coach, one of my favorite things to do is hear from these student athletes and Christina there, you know, she's talking about, well, she may be a little bit shy. She didn't seem like it. And Logan mentioned what you've mentioned before. She is a firecracker out there on that court for this yeah, team. I, I can't help but watch that and smile. I, I really, really enjoy Christina. Um, you know, she is shy off the court. She kind of stays to herself a little bit, you know, walking around and doing those things. And then she gets on the practice floor. She's one of our loudest communicators, um, the, one of the best encouragers of her teammates on the, on the floor and when we're playing. Um, and that kind of energy is infectious. Um, and it's appreciated by our teammates and it's appreciated by our coaches. So uh, it's fun to coach her. Uh, she's still just scratching the surface on what she can be for us. Uh, but she's off to a really good start, Rob. Again, they're out of Belgium. Great to have her. And briefly, Coach, in just a short time, what is that recruiting process like whenever you find a player such as her from Belgium? Yeah, I mean, you know, we recruited her at a junior college, so we didn't have to actually go to Belgium to get her. Um, she'd been in the States for a couple years at NEO in Oklahoma. and um, You know, that's a small town. Um, so uh, this was a jump for her but she's making, the pro she's making the transition really well. Oh, great. Coach, as always, we appreciate your time. More games coming up this week. Looking forward back on the road, and we'll be there along the way. You can always get your tickets and more information, of course, online at gobison.com. That road trip starting up. And, uh, Coach, as always, again, appreciate you being here today. Yeah. Looking you, forward to more success. Thank you. This will wrap it up. As always, horns up. Go Bison. The Bison Basketball Show is presented by Gate City Bank for a better way of life. And Pepsi. This has been an exclusive presentation from Learfield.